Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking fragrant orchids. I'm going to tell you which are the best smelling orchids that I've encountered and I'm going to choose the ones that I think are easier to find. They're the most popular orchids and also the easiest to grow in a home. Now, of course, there are tons of orchids that have wonderful fragrances and you are invited to share down below in the comment section your picks of the best smelling orchids. Today, though, I'm just going to give you the ones that I think are some of the best and at least they're easier to find. And this video was inspired by this little orchid which has a fragrance I did not expect. But before we get to the subject, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and you learn about a new orchid perhaps. And why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's completely free. But if you're feeling extra and you have the possibility, do consider to further support my channel by becoming a member, using the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch, or using the super thanks option below my videos. Right, let's start with this one, since she's the inspiration for this video. This is not one of those iconic, let's say, orchids. You might not be able to find this one all that easily, but don't worry, everybody else is pretty easy to find at this point. This is Phalaenopsis Mituo King Grape. And I actually received this one from a lovely subscriber. So it is a polykylus type Phalaenopsis. If you don't know what this is, check the description. I will link you to a tutorial on polykylus orchids. They are the so-called summer bloomers. They like heat and warmth and don't need a cool down in the winter. And also they have waxy and sometimes very fragrant flowers. So this orchid smells fruity, which is not uncommon for this type of Phalaenopsis, but it has a hint of the most delicious sweetness I've ever detected. I have no other orchid that smells like this. Imagine Skittles, but then combine them with raspberries. It has that sweetness and sourness at the same time, and it's quite fantastic. Now, it's a subtle scent. It's not very strong, sadly. I'm in favor of strong scents, but I know some people can be quite sensitive to that. So maybe if you can tolerate scents, but not very strong scents, maybe this is for you. And I find that it smells most early in the morning and throughout the day it kind of dissipates. Again, it's a subtle scent, but it's one like no other. And I really hope that as it ages, I hope the fragrance gets better and more strong because right now it's just a little bit on the subtle side. And it's just such a beautiful fragrance. If you ever see this one for sale and you like the color, which is a very deep magenta, I would say go for it. It takes the same care as any other polykylus. It looks wonderful, has the waxiest, prettiest flowers, and it has this beautiful scent that I find quite unique. All right, so now let's get to the actual recommendations. I mean, this is a recommendation as well, but I'm not sure how often you will find it. But here is an orchid that I think you'll find a little bit more often. And we're gonna stick to the Polychylus subgenus of Phalaenopsis. And I'm gonna talk about the Phalaenopsis balina. Yeah, I think some of you are expecting this. The Phalaenopsis balina, I think, is the most iconic representative of the Polychylus subgenus of Phalaenopsis. She's a summer bloomer, she's a botanical species, but we are propagating it in cultivation through tissue culture most of the times. So don't worry, we're not getting it from the wild. It is much cheaper and safer to actually propagate it in the laboratory and obtain hundreds of them through tissue culture. So if you purchase your Belina from a reputable source, a reputable nursery, you have nothing to worry about. And the good thing with the Belina is that it has one of the best, juiciest Skittles, let's say, like fruitiest fragrances of the orchid kingdom. There is no other that smells like the Belina, in my opinion. And it is just as easy to grow as a typical Phalaenopsis. Furthermore, if you live in a warm climate or your house or environment generally stays warm and you cannot really give that cool down and you have issues with the flower shop Phalaenopsis, try the Belina, try the Polychylus types of Phalaenopsis. You will not probably find them at the flower shop, but you will find them at the nurseries and they will bloom. The warmer it is, the better it is for them. 
Price-wise, Bellinas should not cost you an arm and a leg. They're not maybe as cheap as the orchids and flower shops. And I strongly encourage you to visit multiple sources, not only, let's say, Etsy, eBay, and all of those sources with private sellers, but also commercial nurseries and get a sense of the price. Because let's face it, there will always be sellers which want to take advantage of whatever is trendy. And if somehow the Bellina becomes trendy, and I think she kind of is trendy because she is so popular, then it might be sold at a higher price than typical. So the prices will differ depending on the region, but do please check multiple sources and I'm sure you'll find something that will be approachable. Mind you, mature specimens might cost more. If you find it as a seedling, go for the seedling. These types of orchids don't take a lot of time to mature actually. It might take a year maybe or so and they can definitely bloom when they're tiny. Look at this one. This definitely will grow much larger than this. This is not a mini Phalaenopsis or anything of the sorts. It will grow larger, but it put out a tiny little flower spike. That's all you need from these orchids. So even if you find it as a seedling at a much more decent price, I say go for it because it might actually bloom while it is still, let's say, a, not a seedling, but a young plant. And anyway, it doesn't take five years to mature like we know some cattleyas do. <laughs> It matures faster than that, so within a year or two, depending on the size, you can actually get flowers. So my first choice is of course the Phalaenopsis Bellina. Who doesn't like it? Who doesn't love it? If there's anybody who hates it, leave me a comment, we need to have a chat. I'm kidding. It's okay not to like it, don't worry. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most of you will enjoy this orchid. And I think if you like fragrances, she's gonna be on the top of the best fragrances you've ever detected. Next up, Brassavolas and many of their hybrids. This one is gonna poke my eyeball. Brassavola orchids are nighttime fragrant orchids and the species are typically white or yellowish or greenish in color. The flowers, being that they're trying to attract night moths, they are fragrant during nighttime and they don't have intricate designs or colors, anything very flashy because what they need is to stand out in the dark. And what stands out other than a pale or white color? So most Brassavolas will not be very colorful, but the fragrance, it is absolutely magical. To me, they smell a little soapy, which I know, hear me out, I know it sounds a little bit bizarre and a little bit like, really, soap? But it's the best soap possible. Um, I don't know if I can describe them in any other way, but if you've ever had night fragrant, maybe jasmine, it's in that type of a scent. If you've ever smelled a garden at night with a lot of flowers that are night fragrant, it's kind of like that. I don't find it to be necessarily extremely unique in the plant world because all of these scents, they're kind of trying to attract the same type of pollinators. So they will be similar between them, but definitely they have the edge over other plants, in my opinion. Some of them are so extremely fragrant, you can fill up an entire house with the scent of a Brassavola. So what I have here is the Brassavola cuculata, which is one of my favorites. This one needs repotting, but many of their hybrids actually inherit the wonderful fragrance, plus they get some colors onto them. And this one is um, Brassocatlea amethyst. I think it's a Brassavola cuculata hybrid with, not entirely sure what Catlea, but anyway, there are other hybrids out there as well. The Francis Fox, which is another wonderful hybrid. It's orange and beautiful. It's a very popular one. That one has a great fragrance as well. The Brassocatlea amethyst, I'm starting to see it for sale more and more. I don't think it's as popular, but in my opinion, there are many other Brassavola hybrids that have fragrance. Most of them that have elongated leaves like this and the flower that looks like a colorful Brassavola, in my opinion, most of them do inherit the fragrance as well because they do have a very heavy Brassavola heritage. And most of them are fragrant during nighttime. In the daytime, they typically don't smell of anything, but come nightfall, let the magic begin. Now, I really enjoy the bloom of my Amethyst this year. She has the biggest bloom ever at this point. I've never had her with such a big bloom, but she can create more 
flowers than this. These orchids take the same care as Cattleyas, meaning they do enjoy pretty bright light. And sadly, this one was not kept in the brightest of light. The more light you give them, the better they will bloom. And the more warmth you're gonna give them, the better they will bloom as well. So very typical Cattleya care and culture. They will do better for you if your home stays more on the warm side. They don't care about humidity. Just water them when they're dry. They're extremely tolerant to drought and low humidity. So if that's you, and I know it's me, Cattleyas are the orchid of choice for us, literally. I could grow these outside, but I will have to water way too often. But they would be good outside. They don't like cold though, so don't keep them out if you know your temperatures are gonna dip into almost freezing conditions. They're perfect house pets, as I like to call them. And with that wild shape and fragrance, who can say no, right? Well, I do know some people who don't like the fragrance. Be warned, it's a very strong fragrance. Some of these are extremely fragrant. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, this is not for you. Maybe this entire video is not for you, but maybe you can take it as, okay, I need to stay away from these orchids. Maybe that will be helpful. Speaking about Cattleyas, in my opinion, generally Cattleyas are the undisputed queens of fragrance. I think they have some of the most wonderful fragrances in the orchid hobby. And the thing is, most of them are actually fragrant. Now, there are a few Cattleyas which are not. Typically, the ones that have Sophronides in their parentage or are the actual Sophronides. Now, this is old name. They have been reclassified to Cattleyas. So nowadays, maybe it might be hard to tell, but just Google a little bit and you will find the old names as well. Guarianthe, another genus, which I don't know if it's Cattleya nowadays, but it's used a lot in hybridization. Things that have a lot of Guarianthe are typically not fragrant. Think Catlianthe Rojo, that one is not fragrant. That being said though, the vast majority of everything else is fragrant. So let's just say fluffy flowered Catlia orchids, they're the best smelling flowers of planet Earth, in my opinion. I'm sure you will disagree, but I'm an orchid grower, so I can only talk about orchids. Now, fluffy flowered Cattleyas are those ones that produce very large, very, let's say, classical corsage-like flowers. All of those, I'm willing to bet, are fragrant. And their fragrance ranges from rosy scents to lily scents, maybe sometimes a little bit spicy at the same time. They're all wonderfully fragrant. And then you have stuff like this. This is a Cattleya Tropical Pointer, which is not fluffy, but it has in her parentage very fragrant Cattleyas. And this one has a wonderful scent, a little spicy, a little lily-like. It's not very strong though, but it is definitely noticeable. If you want strong scented orchids, go for the big flowered Cattleyas. Those ones sadly don't bloom all that often. There's a downside to that beauty of a big flower. It is very fragrant, blooms once a year and grows slow. But there are other types of Cattleyas which are in between. Best thing to do, is to research a little bit the orchid or the hybrid you are thinking of. But just so you know, Cattleyas are generally very, very, very fragrant and the fragrances are absolutely out of this world. And I think whatever fluffy flowered Cattleya you go for, you're not gonna regret it. It's gonna look wonderful and it's gonna smell wonderful. But what about Oncidiums, I hear you say? Well, definitely we do have some very fragrant Oncidiums, but Generally speaking, Oncidium and Tergenerics are definitely not as beautifully fragrant as Cattleyas are. I will mention though, the most fragrant of Oncidiums is the Sherry Baby or its close, let's say cousin, the Oncidium Heaven Redolence or Heaven Scent Redolence. You're gonna have on the screen the names. These two orchids are known for having a chocolatey fragrance. I'm not even joking. To my nose, it's one-to-one -one milk chocolate. Other people might describe it as vanilla. Scent is a very personal thing, so we might sense it a little bit differently, but everyone agrees it is a yummy fragrance. It definitely is sweet. And if you detect the chocolate and you love chocolate, oh man, you're gonna love that orchid. It's not hard to grow. Oncidiums are generally easy to grow in a home. I think they are better suited for, let's say, more temperate climates rather than hot and dry climates. But I can pull it off with a little bit of work and I'm sure you can pull it off as well. They're man-made hybrids, so 
they should work in most homes mind you though they do like water that's the only thing that you should know about them and they do bloom even multiple times a year if they have multiple growths so you can have that wonderful chocolatey smell multiple times a year if you divide them you can have multiple plants and you can increase the fragrance in your home anyway sherry baby i think we can all agree one of the most iconic most popular oncidium type orchids put it on your wish list i'm sure it will pop up at nurseries because it really is one of those iconic orchids that almost all of us know all of us who have been in the hobby know about it we might not all have it or even maybe enjoy it but we all know about it is the chocolate orchid and you should know about it too and put it on your wish list because it's a great oncidium to have. Speaking about iconic orchids, we cannot skip the coconut orchid. This is Maxillaria tenifolia. It is a species, but again, we have it in cultivation for a lot of years. We're not getting it from the wild. And this is so popular, so iconic, and for good reason, because the flowers smell like coconut. I'll be honest, I don't detect necessarily coconut, maybe because I didn't grow up in a tropical country, so I didn't have access to coconuts. Whatever I had was that store powder that you put on cookies and it doesn't really smell like that. But from what you guys told me, it smells like the actual fruit, like the actual fresh coconut. It is a wonderful fruity fragrance to my nose. If you come from a country that didn't grow up with coconuts, think peaches i detect the scent of peaches somehow i don't know how but i'm sure it has to do with what we grew up with right i had a lot of peaches because they grow in my country so that's what it reminds me of but in the orchid world it is known as the coconut orchid i have a tutorial about it check it down below it is really easy to grow in a home you don't need special conditions it is a thirsty orchid though and it likes bright light and it can grow massive but it looks beautiful and very, very ornamental. A little bit like a grass, right? Well, every year in the spring, it blooms. And the bigger your orchid is, the better you care for it, the more full of blooms will be as well. So you can have not only a wonderful coconutty fragrance in your home, but also a wonderful display of tiny red little flowers. Now, there are a few varieties on the market. Some will have darker colored flowers, some lighter colored flowers. But to me, the fragrance is the same with all of them. And as I was saying, again, it's one of those iconic orchids which most of us know about. If we don't have it, at least we know that it exists. But it's so popular, so iconic, that I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have a whole lot of issues finding it at nurseries. What usually happens is that the stocks run out, but they do get replenished periodically. So if you don't find it for sale now, put it on the wish list, wait it out. It's a very popular orchid, it's not going growing. It's not going anywhere. I'm sure it will still be on the market for many years to come. Alrighty guys, so these have been my picks for the best smelling orchids that you can have in your home. Let me know your picks down below in the comment section because I'm interested in more fragrant orchids as well. I want to have mostly fragrant orchids because I'm a fragrance freak. Alrighty, so with that said, I hope you found this video useful and interesting and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. With that said, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.